Hi, my name is Julia Silgi, and I'm a data scientist and software engineer at our studio. And today, in this screencast, we're going to use this week's Tidy Tuesday data set on drought, which you know is affecting so much of the U.S. and the West, including where I live. And today, we're going to use this data set of drought and um, uh, use it as a way to uh, understand how to use spatial resampling to um, more accurately understand how you know your your statistical modeling is um, describing the relationship that you're looking for so i'm gonna subset down in the state set to texas um, which is where i'm from um, my home state so we're going to look at drought in texas and see how we can um, relate it to other characteristics all right let's learn about drought i live in utah now and we are in you know exceptional drought like super dramatic drought and so i am really um glad to learn you know be able to explore more about this because it's something that really honestly affects my life and so many people's lives um so this data right here is drought over me like multiple measurements a month for every county and it goes back quite a long time. Um, I think for my purposes, I am just gonna, um, I'm gonna filter down, like I said in the intro, I'm gonna filter down to Texas. And then also, I think I am just going to look at one year. I'm not gonna try to do some kind of like time series type thing here. I'm just going to, let's get, so I'll do this this way. So I'll get Texas and then I'll get everything that the year, um, let's do last year like that. Okay. So now we have, we still have many measurements a month, but now we just have Texas. Um, let's here, let's just get one measurement per, um, per county. So let's group by, um, this FIPS, um, Let's say group by FIPS and oops, yep, uh huh. And then let's get the mean uh, drought score like that. All right, let's do that. Let's call that drought. And now we should, whoops, FIPS, FIPS. So now we have for every county in Texas, which they all start with 48 because they're Texas. This is what FIPS codes look like. What is the mean drought during 2021? So I've, I've summarized that a lot, but um, I think that will be give us the opportunity to really understand a little bit about spatial resampling. Um, so we have drought by county. Now let's get, let's go to the census data and get some, some data to combine with this. So I just would sing the praises all day of this tidy census package. It is so, so great. If you dealt with getting census data into R before this package existed, you know what I'm talking about. This, I, I just could be like a walking commercial for this, um, for this package. I am going to use the, the ACS, which is the American Community Survey, and I am going to do this in such a way. So I need counties because that's what I have. Um, in my other data that I'm going to join up with, and I'm gonna I'm gonna do Texas, and then um, I have to say of uh, this thing this variable here, so that is the um, the what what do you want census data about? And so I looked up ahead of time one of these. So this one is for um, this one is for median household income, but you know the census has just like uh, so much data available. And then I am going to say um, geometry equals true. And what this is going to do is it is going to, um, not geography, geometry, geometry. Um, it's going to give us a simple feature tibble. Um, so geometry that we can plot. So let's call this Texas median um, income like that. And let's get whoops, this. So what's happening here, I have a, um, a, I have a, um, a census data 
environment variable with my API key in it. And so what this function just did was took my API key, went off to the census, got this ACAS data and brought it back. And now I have, I can maybe do this so it might print a little better. No, I have to really, I'll do it. Here we go. Okay, so now what I have is for the 254 counties in Texas, um, this is the same as a FIPS code here, the name, this is the variable I asked for. And then what this is here is um, the, the, house, the median household income, because I told, I said, please give me this, um, the estimate, the margin of error. And then this geometry is what we can plot. What we're going to be able to use for plotting. So let's let's do it. Let's do it. Um, the let's see. We can say Texas median income. So I'm going to say fill equal. Oh, you know what? Let's join it up first. Let's join these things up first. So let's take the median income here and join with the drought. A drought. There you go. Let's call this drought simple feature because now they're all oh, right. Okay, so in um, here it's called GOID. Here it is called FIPS, but those are the same things. I did it wrong. By equals it's like this. Okay. There we go. So what this looks like is here. So now not only do we have this um, estimate, which is the income, we have this one, which is the drought score there. So let's now we can um, uh, plot the drought score and see how that variables so uh, varies across the across the state of Texas. So we can say geome sf like this which takes care of so much of the you know of the mapping and the plotting it's so nice. Um, I usually like to drop the alpha a little bit and I don't like the lines around the counties. I like them to have no lines. And then um, uh, I like I like you know every, everyone likes but I also like the Viridis um, color palette. So let's see what this like. So so this is a um, map of Texas and this map of Texas is showing us the mean drought score in 2021 for each county. So it looks like drought is lower you know over here which are the woodsy eastern part of Texas where it's humid and then drought is high over here in the um in the western part of Texas like the western panhandle out here towards El Paso a little bit in the valley here so this is this was the mean drought last year um uh, so yeah, yeah, there we go. So we are, we're mapping what the drought looks like. And now what I would like to do is to, um, build a model that's going to relate the drought to the income. Cause I mean, growing up in Texas, I know like these are lower income areas of Texas, you know, it's very rural and lower income, but there's also areas over here that are, um, lower income. So let's see what we see here. So let's take that, um, the drought, let's plot the um, drought on the x-axis, the income on the y-axis, and then put some points like this. Um, oh, in, yeah, that's kind of interesting. What if we put, I mean, obviously, obviously there's a huge variance here, right? But what if I did, what if I did put a line on there. So the, um, so A, I am not making any causal claims here, okay, <laughs> that drought causes people to have lower incomes. Um, but what we're doing is that we're saying, um, uh, like, how are these things related to each other? What's the variability? How strong is the relationship, etc. So this is the drought score on the x-axis. And at higher drought score, at more drought, we don't, we have more like lower incomes. At the lower drought score, we have um, 
we have, I don't know, kind of like more of variance maybe a little bit, like like more high and low. Um, th these are crazy high median household incomes, goodness. So um, anyway, um, this is, I, I, you know, there's something of relationship here, but um, it's certainly not one where we're, you know, like we're measuring something that directly controls it. Anyway, what I would like to do is go on and use modeling so that we can understand this relationship a little more and how this relationship changes across Texas. So let's load uh, tidy models. Let me make this a little bit easier to see. <clears throat> So let's uh, load tidy models. Let's load spatial sample, which is an extension package for our sample that lets you um, um, build resamples for spatial data. And then let, let's see, we'll set a seed. And um, there we are, we, you know, we're adding all kinds of new methods and documentation this summer as we work on spatial sample. And so the one that I am going to work, that I'm going to use here, is the block CV. So like it says here, it splits the whole area that you have into these grid cells and then assigns the data into folds based on the blocks that the centroid falls into. So let us do that. Whoops over here. Fold, so spatial, block CV. I'm going to put in that um, SF object because it that's what it needs. It needs to have the geometries to be able to do the math. And then let's make um, 10 cross-validation folds. So we've got, oh, I already ran that, but there it goes. Okay. So we have 10 folds, and so, uh, you know, Texas has 254 counties. So in each of these cross-validation folds, some um, data, depending on the blocks, are getting put into training or analysis, and some is getting put into testing or assessment. And the idea here is that we train our data on all these uh, resamples and or parts of the data, we assess it on these parts, and because we've done this special spatial block, block cross-validation, we won't be um, overly fooled by the autocorrelation that we have, that like counties that are close together are more similar to each other. Um, another thing that we've uh, that Mike has added this summer that is so great is an auto plot method for these resampling types. So what this gives us is a, um, a, there it is. Okay, so what this is is a, a visualization of how the data got divided up into um, blocks or how into um, folds. So uh, you can see the grid of blocks on top of Texas here. And then each one of these, you can see the counties and the shapes of the counties. And then you can see how they were assigned to these different folds. And we've got 10 folds and, you know, 254 counties. And then like a grid here of, um, of blocks that divided which counties go into which blocks, which blocks go into which folds. That's the way this, this works. We also have an auto plot method for an individual split. So, you know, we've got 10 of these, right? So like if I look at the ninth one here, what this, um, do I execute it? Whoops. Uh, oh, right. Sorry, classic blunder. There we go. Okay, that is better. Wait for that to pop up. And so this shows us for the ninth resample, um, how did it get divided up? So everything that is in the, you know, the coral color is analysis or used to train the data. And then the assessment set are those ones that are in the aqua. And that is what is used to evaluate. And so which, which counties go into the folds, um, you know, like it, uh, it's different for every fold. And so this lets us, um, if we evaluate some model, uh, have a more accurate estimate of what, um, our performance would be because we're, we're, we're trying to cut, we're trying to account for this like spatial auto correlation and do a better job in how we assess our models. Um, so that is all so exciting to see. I am so happy with how all the changes that are being made for folks who use with spatial data. 
Um, now let's do a little bit of modeling. So let's just make like a dead simple model. Let's explain the um, income with the drought and see, you know, what does that relationship look like? How does the relationship change across the state of Texas? Just, just um, you know, a linear model. And then we can use fit resamples to fit this model to each of the folds. So if we fit it like this, what will happen is that it will um, uh, just give us predictions back, but we also, we don't just want the predictions. We also want, the, I'm sorry, we don't just want the metrics. It will just give us the metrics if we do it that way. But if we say save pred equals true, then we will also give us the predictions. It will save the predictions from each of these 10 resamples. Let's call this drought result, like so. So it's just fitting these 10 models and it has kept the metrics in this column and the predictions in this column. So notice that we have 31 predictions in the first row because we have 31 um, counties that are in the assessment set, which you can think of as a test set, as like a test set. Okay, we can, let's look at the predictions too. Drought result. Tab. There we go. Okay, so what we have here is for every fold, so fold one would have 31, and then we go to the next one. So for every fold, and uh, we know uh, from the original data which row it is, what is the predicted median household income, and what is the real median household income. So we've got these two, these things here. Let's, um, Let's let's join some of this back up so that we can make a map here at the end. So we'll take the um, our original data. Uh, let's let's add a column called row dot row like this. So this is so that we can match this back up here. There we go. So let's now join with these predictions like that. All right. And now let us um, group by uh, the GOID and then we can compute um, metrics now. So we, because we have the real value and the predicted value, we can compute any kind of metric that we want. And since I grouped by the county, I'm going to get the metric per county. So let's say I want to find RMSE and I'm going to first say the, um, uh, no, that's wrong. I'm going to say the estimate and the prediction. So uh, the estimate is the thing we were predicting, and the prediction is um, what we got out. So if we do this, we will get joined by, hmm, that seems weird. Uh, is that right? Estimate. Wait, I've all of a sudden I'm concerned. Um, so estimate here is the real thing. Estimate here, also the real thing. Okay, that's okay. Okay, group by county, compute the metrics. So what we have here is for every county, the um, the RMSE. So this is in. This is in dollars, so the it's our messy is on the same unit as the original <clears throat> outcome. So this is in dollars. So let's um, uh, let's take this these things out that we can estimate estimate like this. Okay, so let's call this the drought RMSE. I mean, maybe it'd be a little better to think about it as the as the income RMSE, since the, maybe that'd be a better name. Anyway, onward. Okay, um, so now let's go back to our original data again, and let's join with this RMSE data. Like this. It is still a simple feature collection, so we should be able to just pop that right into our plotting. We will do it. Now, Phil, is this 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 metric that we made? 
and whoops, not a pipe. Um, again, I don't like the lines and I like to drop the alpha a little bit and yeah, that's it, right? I think so. So let's see how this looks. Oh, interesting. Okay. Oh, this is cool. Oh, I love it. I love it. We can see like cities. Um, so let's do this. And this is, um, these are in dollars. Okay. Let's see what this looks like. Okay. I love it. Okay. This is so interesting. So, um, uh, so this is RMSC. So how, basically how, how bad of a job can we do explaining, um, the, the income from the drought? So a lot of this looks very, you know, just not too bad, right? Like higher, lower, you know, like, but just, but we see these pockets that are really bright. We are not predicting them well. This is Fort Worth and Dallas. This is Houston. This is Austin and San, um, yeah, and the kind of that area around Austin, San Antonio. So these bright places are all the cities. So people make a lot of money in the cities relative to how much drought there is. Um, so I guess that's our big takeaway. <laughs> again, like again, I'm not making a causal argument here. What I'm making an argument for is that um, a spatial sample helps you create spatially aware resamples so you can do a better job of understanding your model performance with spatial data. All right, we did it. We used um, spatial resampling to uh, to estimate how well this model that um, that we made performed. So again, um, uh, this is not a model where I'm trying to make a causal claim between like income and drought. But instead, we can show like how are these things related? Um, where do we see um, differences in um, in that relationship? And for example, here we saw the like the biggest differences in the um, in the counties that have um, uh, they're very urban, the counties with the cities in them. So spatial resampling so important when you have spatial data like this, so that we're not um, uh, fooled by overly optimistic results. And I hope this was helpful, and I'll see you next time.